Hello, I'm Matthew Cave from Beyond the Brick, and I'm here with David Pagano. And David, uh, you are author of the Brick Animation book, upcoming release. Co-author, yes. Co-author. Can, cannot co-author. take anything away. You can't say author from, or co-author. From David Pickett, who, uh, without whose help, or help, I'm, I'm making it reductive to an insane degree. It's we are of collaborators. Equal, equal footing. Fifty percent. Yes, partnership is okay. what it is. Um, no, uh, without David and I working together, this book would not exist. And uh, I'm so glad it does exist, or it will shortly exist. Uh, yes. It's fantastic. And uh, so one of the really big considerations when you're uh, animating with LEGO mm-hmm. is um, how you build with LEGO. Sure, and uh, sure. how that LEGO building is different than it would be, say, if you're just building for a static town display. Right. So talk about what are the intricacies of building for LEGO animation. Absolutely. Um, so the main, the main sort of LEGO brick film building tenant is to only build what your camera will see. Um, you know, obviously that, that does tie into um, building for display because you're not, if you're building a big display for like a Lego fan event and people are going to see the outside, you're not going to build the inside rooms unless there's like a cutaway or some sort of like window that you can see in. It's just going to be like a, some sort of rainbow colored structure that... Uh, there's holds, no need to build 360. Together. Correct, correct. Uh, so with brick films that gets taken even further where it's like, alright, if if you're just going to need, like, this part of the town, just build, like, those three buildings and nothing else. If you just need, like, this part of the space station, don't build, like, the entire planet. Just build, like, whatever is within the camera's field of vision. Do that very, like, cliche, like, 1940s, ah, I'm going to make you a star, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, it's literally that. It's like, okay, well, whatever is within my fingers, that's what the camera is going to see. Because um, if you don't take a picture of it, no one's going to know whether you built it or not. So, yeah, yeah. so, uh, and you can use that to great effect. You can actually, you know, I don't want to say trick, but you can give the audience the illusion that the things you have built are of a much larger scale than they actually are, and that's helpful in giving your film scope and exactly. giving them uh, uh, a feeling of world building. Mm-hmm. And now, when I think of animation, I always think of many hours, and it's stop motion animation, I want to make sure I tack that on. Sure. Uh, many, many hours of, uh, you know, small adjustments, lots of photography. Correct. And uh, lots of adjustments means movement. And movement in animation is a good thing when it's a ball tracing across the screen, but not a good thing when your whole set is kind of uh, sort of jigging or moving around on the table. Absolutely. Uh, how does one prevent that? What are the, you know, considerations you want to take into account when you're... Uh, sort of trying to minimize movement or bad movement. Yes. Um, you know, David, David and I run a blog. Um, we've been a little bit derelict at updating it as of late, but it's called The Set Bump. Yes. And The Set Bump, the name comes from when you bump your set during stop motion and you have to readjust or... Uh, yeah, we are. We are. We try to be funny anyway. Uh, but it, that, that's, that's where that comes from and also Lego sets, of course. Um, but... Yes, so when you're building with animation, one of the things we talk about in the book is stability. Making sure you have manual control, not only over your camera settings and things like that, but also um, over the things that you've built. That things are only moving when you want them to. Stop motion animators are very, um, uh, what's what's like the phrase? They are uh, sort of control freaks, I guess. Uh, and you, uh, But it's, it's necessary. You need to know that like if you're going in there to make like the tiniest movement of like a little guy. Um, it's not going to move like the car and three of the buildings in the background too. You just need to move that guy and, and nothing else. And especially when you're doing photography of such small characters, like many figures, like this looks small in my hand and like I can move it and it doesn't look like it's changing that much. But when the camera is like right up on his face, like it every tiny, tiny increment gets little magnified little a thousand times. Yeah, he's not going to say. There he is. Um, so uh, we talk about um, obviously taking great advantage of clutch power, um, doing um, using things like hinges and turntables and joints, and actively designing things in a way that um, you can move them when you need to move them, and they will stay relatively still when you need them to stay still. Um, putting uh, placing props and things like that in in a, such a way where. You know, maybe there's one stud holding it on, so when the character goes over to pick it up, it comes off easily, but for the rest of the time, it's not just, like, wiggling around yes. from the vibrations yes. of the room you're in. Um, 
sticking things down with tape or clamps, all that kind of stuff. Like um, a base plate onto a table with like yes, double setting. Yeah. So we, we in the in the beginning of the book we guide people through the basics and the first thing is like setting up your animation surface, which can be like a desk or uh, a tabletop or um, a counter. I used to shoot on a, the kitchen counter in my parents' basement when I was a kid, awesome. and that was like built into the wall, so it would not move or go yeah, anywhere. No uh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I, I use clamps. Dave uses tape. Um, sometimes I use tape. Sometimes he uses clamps. It's uh, we go back and forth. But um, anything you can do to keep your your base plate steady and locked in place is, is a good way to go. Uh, but then also making sure that you have the option if you want to. You know, maybe when you're getting on set, you're like, oh, I have this clamp down, but it'd really be great if I could just like do this and like turn it just a little bit to make it like a little more interesting. So it's. It's tough because you want to have control, but you also want to give yourself the freedom to have ten more ideas exactly. when you get to the, the when the time comes to animate. Give and take there. Absolutely. And then uh, talk about modularity. I know your figures uh, have a modular balance piece. Is this correct? Would yes. You, wow, you, you're, you're really. It's almost as if you've read the book already. Can, uh, can we fake this? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yes. So uh, mod modularity. We talk about. Obviously, people are most familiar with this from like classic castle sets or obviously the, uh, the modular buildings, which have been going strong for a few years now. And um, modularity definitely ties into brick filming as well. It's, you know, real film sets have flats, which are just fake walls that you can pull out and stick the camera there. They have windows that you can tilt so you don't get reflections. Um, and we, all of those concepts tie perfectly into the brick filming sphere. And so we talk about building like a set that's easily uh, Easily take a partable. Take a part, that's a word. Yeah, and um, using modular buildings, making sure that uh, wherever you need to have your scene take place is somewhere that not only the camera can fit into and see, but also your hands can fit into because uh, Lego film sets are really tiny for the most part. A lot of people just use minifigures, and that scale, you know, it's a minifigure scale world, but it's a human scale camera, and to get that in there. And uh, still be able to fit your hands into it's anime a is uh, is a trick. So definitely. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, David. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Absolutely, yeah. And you will be able to read lots more about that in the forthcoming Lego Animation book. Fantastic. Yeah.